There are a lot of anime that come out every year. Over a hundred, plus a bunch of movies and OVAs. A small number of these tend to catch on and are still talked about months or even years later. And yes, many of these shows that no one remembers are forgotten for good reason. But there are a few that I really like and it saddens me that these aren't more popular. So today I want to talk to you about 10 anime that have aired since I started watching seasonal anime back in summer of 2013, but they don't get much attention anymore. Even though they are ones that I liked, or at least they have something to stand out from the rest that I think at least deserve some attention. Honorable mentions go out to Shinsekai Yori because it's amazing, but it aired before I started watching seasonal anime, so I can't include it. Plus, it's grown somewhat in popularity, though not nearly as much as a show like that deserves. Also, honorable mentions go out to Shonen Maid and High School Fleet because they've surprisingly kept me interested so far, but they haven't finished yet, and I don't really want to include shows on the list that aren't finished yet, but still, they're less bad than I thought they would be, if that's a compliment. Anyway, onto the list itself. Number 10 is Yuri Kumarashi. This show is, well, I don't really know how to put it. It's a symbolic story about love and acceptance, about how society forces people to conform to its standards. It's also about revenge a little bit and, well, bears, or kumas as I call them because kumas sound cuter. This is where I would like to say that it's just an awesome show that you should go experience for yourself, but it's not a show I am that overly fond of, actually. Its symbolic way of telling the story made it very hard to get into until the last probably third or so. And then there are many things in this anime that do not make any sense whatsoever, but that's kind of intentional, so I'm not sure if I can count it against the show or not. If you're someone who likes stories told more through symbolism, where thematic presentation matters more than a logical world, then maybe you should watch it. And if you're not sure, give it a couple episodes. If you can make it through those, fine, then I'm pretty sure you will enjoy this anime. Number 9 is Sora no Method. Have you ever watched a show that feels like another show even though you've never seen that other one? That's actually how I felt when I started watching Sora no Method, getting a lot of Anahana vibes from it even though I have not seen Anahana yet. It's a show about a young girl who moves back to a town that she used to live in and what happens when she meets her old friends who she's largely forgotten. There's also the whole giant saucer thing above the town too and Noel and well... The show is about these characters' friendship, but what makes this show remarkable is its amazing art and music during some really emotional moments. If you want a story filled with friendship and feels, then this one is really one for you. Number 8. My mental choices are completely interfering with my high school romantic comedy. This show's name is still a mouthful, and it is one of the funniest shows on this list. It is your basic harem, but with the twist that this main guy is played with absolute choice, where he will randomly be compelled between two normally absurd things, which tend to lead to his humiliation and the viewer's amusement. Yes, unfortunately this show is unfinished and the jokes may get old depending on your taste in comedy, but I do love absurd shows. Plus, the OVD did a wonderful job of parodying visual novels, even if choice number three gave my sister nightmares. You should just go watch it so you understand what choice number three is. Number 7. When Supernatural Battles Become Commonplace I have come to realize that there are a lot of harems and slice of lives on this list, but each of them seem to have some type of twist to them that makes them interesting. And what makes Eno Battle interesting is how it's able to weave its way around the cliches that below the genre. It does a good job of handling the character relationships, and it's completely brilliant with the way it averts what you would expect from the fantasy side of the story. It is sadly another one that I want to see more of, but I still really like its way of doing things differently. Number 6, Kaisu Giga. And here I thought Yuri Kumarashi was hard to describe. Kaisu Giga is about a girl in an alternate version of Tokyo, a trio of siblings who are trying to make do until their parents return. And well, just look at the things on the screen here. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, after all. It also presents some interesting themes about creating your own destiny. Like many of these shows, this one might not be for everyone, but I think it's at least unique enough to try. Number 5, Arsene Senki. This is a show that I'm really surprised did not get more attention as it aired. Sure, some people were excited about the first few episodes, but then it pretty much just dropped off the radar for everyone. It is a pretty solid action-adventure show, dealing with Arslan being thrown from life as a prince of a powerful nation to one who has to fight to reclaim his kingdom. It also provides some interesting looks at religion and the danger that it can present when taken to the extreme. It also shows how there is both good and evil within each side of the conflict. Arslan may not be the most groundbreaking or amazing show out there, but is still quite enjoyable. Plus, the author of the original source material wrote Legend of the Galactic Heroes, so that has to say something about it. Number 4, Punchline. I have noticed another trend with anime on this list. They're either slice of left hairs with a twist, or they're very bizarre and hard to describe. And well, this one's kind of both. Because here you have a guy living in an apartment with several very unique girls, and when he sees their underwear, the world is destroyed, because he's a ghost. Don't worry, it makes more sense in context. Okay, it doesn't actually, but that's what makes the show so much fun. It weaves around the normal harem tropes, focusing instead on the friendship between the characters and the mystery of what's really going on. It may have its problems, but it is a show that I am glad I decided to give a second chance to a few months ago. Number 3, Show by Rock. Yes, another slice of left anime with a twist, this time with a music focus in a bad guys trying to take over the world thing. 
This pretty much ordinary girl is thrown into a world where music is power and she joins a band and saves the world. I really like how they show the desire to become a successful musician with a slightly serious plot overshadowing everything. Plus the art style, just look at these colors. Yes, this show is a fun one. Don't expect anything super dark or super serious here, but this was a surprisingly enjoyable, lighthearted adventure woven in with a music-focused story. Number 2. Ori Twintail's Ninari Masu Now, there are probably two different types of reactions to seeing this one on the list. If you're new to my channel, you're probably wondering what this show is. Well, if you've been around a while, you're probably surprised that this is not number one. Because I am a fanboy of this absurd show about a Twin Tails obsessed teenager turning into a Twin Tailed magical girl to fight aliens who wish to steal the love of Twin Tails from the world. And if that's not that awesome to you, then you good sir are merely a pleb who probably thinks things like Tatami Galaxy are better than Kill a Kill. Twin Tails is most simply a show that is able to thrive off of its absurdity to create a show that is just, well, a lot of fun. It never tries to be all that serious, but it embraces its crazy plot with such gusto that I can't help but love it. Plus, I love how it deals with some themes about Father Wong's passions, but maybe that's just me overthinking things. This show is awesome for reasons that I cannot fully describe or understand, and I just recommend everyone to at least give it a try, and you might like as much as I do, though probably not quite as much as me because I might be a little bit obsessed here. Just a little bit, though. And number one is Say You Life. A lot of shows on this list have been pretty much a slice of life, though with a twist added, so I'm guessing you would expect the same from this entry. But what makes this show stand out is not that it does anything super unexpected, there's no zombies, no supernatural elements or anything, but instead does the basic Moe slice of life genre really well, making it one of my favorite slice of lives ever. It's about these three girls who are trying to make it as voice actresses, but there's a good amount of conflict as they struggle to follow their dreams. It never gets melodramatic, but the difficulties they face really do seem natural. There's also a lot of really good comedy here, and I like the look we get at the voice acting industry through the show. But the thing that really stands out to me is the themes about overcoming fear to follow your dreams and take your place in the world. This has actually been my favorite show to come out of this past year, and even if you're not normally one for the genre, I think it's still worth giving it a try. I normally don't get excited for this genre, but I enjoyed every single episode of this one. And well, that's my list. I hope you found something new here, something that you maybe dropped or haven't checked out or just never heard of. And also, tell me what anime you've liked over the past few years that you feel deserve more exposure. I'm always on the lookout for a new anime to watch, even though I really don't have enough time to watch everything I want to. Oh well, I guess that's what makes this whole thing so much fun. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video, and leave comments, likes, subscriptions if you really want to, and I will talk to you next time.